My name's Kevin Kinsella. I'm with Northrop Grumman, Unmanned Systems in San Diego, California. I'm the architect for our next generation cyber secure flight computer. So I'm gonna give you an overview of our zero trust avionic security architecture. So what's the problem that that's trying to solve, which is how do you secure a system or a mission from end to end, flight security? Starting with the coding and the testing until the air vehicle lands and stops safely on the runway. So there's a couple things going on in there. So let's start with zero trust. Zero trust means all the devices and any human who interacts with those devices are not trusted. So a nicer way to say that is they all have to prove their identities. So the next part is avionics. If you're not familiar with that, avionics is a contraction of aviation and electronics, all the black boxes that can crash the air vehicle. So security, security is cybersecurity, and it consists of your standards, CIA, your confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. And we're using symmetric, asymmetric, uh, Diffie-Hellman, crypto hashing, uh, uh, our own Northrop uh, certificates are being loaded in to the, uh, to the different devices. And the architecture is multiple layers of defense. So that's called defense in depth. And so the best architecture is simple, and simple is always not easy, and simple is, it takes a lot of hard work to make things simple. So here's my philosophy on architectures. Nicely said, I think. So here's the avionic security architecture. There's four main subsystems. Each of those subsystems has been loaded or provisioned with Northrop keys and digital certificates. So at the heart of an operational mission, in the center there for the air vehicle is the vehicle management computer. That's our flight computer. So that flight computer needs two things to perform and execute a mission successfully. It needs an OFP, which is the operational flight program. That's basically the flight software. And then it needs a mission plan. So the mission plan is a linked list of waypoints that consists of a latitude, a longitude, and an altitude to define a point in three space, it consists of a time of arrival, and then it consists of an action. So the security actually starts down in the lower right with our DevSecOps. So our software testers and our software developers, we use two-factor authentication and role-based access to maintain security at that level. So to start a mission, the, the output of DevSecOps is a s encrypted and signed OFP and mission plan. So to start a mission, I'm gonna walk you through the first three waypoints of a mission. So a typical mission will go like this, and the, the waypoints are an attack surface, as is the OFP. The software, you don't want any constants be gain constants being changed, any filter constants being changed. So a typical mission runs like this. The OFP is already loaded into the flight computers, but the mission plan will be loaded into the ground support computer. The flight crew or the ground crew will walk up, plug it into the air vehicle, upload the mission plan, run subsystems bit, verify all the systems are green, so we call that a green board. And at that point, control is handed over to the left side there, the ground station, that's where the pilot is. So the pilot's gonna affect the takeoff, and the pilot interacts with the control tower and gets permission to access the runway. So for the first three waypoints, the action is to stop. When you get to this, this imaginary uh, waypoint on the ground, like breadcrumbs on the ground, if you will, the action is to stop. So once the pilot gets permission to access the runway, they click on taxi, the air vehicle moves to the first waypoint and stops, and then performs a brake check. The purpose of that is to make sure the brakes are working and the air vehicle hasn't drifted off of centerline. Pilot clicks taxi again. The air vehicle autonomously taxis to the second waypoint, which is right just short of the runway. They call it the hold short line. So at that point, the vehicle is autonomously stopped. The pilot talks to the control tower and says, hey, is the runway still mine? Normally it is, but there may be an emergency flight coming in. So once permission is granted, the pilot clicks taxi again the air vehicle turns onto the runway onto the center line to the third waypoint and stops. At that point, the pilot 
checks his status on all his subsystems to make sure everything is green. Normally it is. So then he clicks taxi. And the, air the flight computers release the brakes, step on the gas, the air vehicle starts accelerating down the runway. Now there's one last check that's done. It's a standard check. It's called V1D1. So if everything is healthy, the air vehicle, after it's traveled a distance D1, the velocity will be greater than V1. If it's not, an autonomous shutdown occurs. So what that's checking for is, for example, let's say simple mechanical problems. You've got some brakes that are dragging, or the engine is not generating enough thrust for whatever reason, so that'll stop the mission. But more insidious, if you have a malicious actor that's changed the waypoint and action on the waypoint or changed one of those constants, the bad things can happen. So our top level requirement for this avionic security architecture is flight security. Now, flight security and flight safety, they're really two sides to the same coin, at least in my mind. So this is a little bit of an eye chart, but it's showing that flight safety traditionally on the right hand side of this pyramid consisted of airworthiness. So if you could show your system met all this, complied to MIL standard 516 and met all the paragraphs, you were granted airworthiness certification. So for our system, we have to, we're, we're concerned primarily about determinism and latency and throughput. Traditionally, that's all you had to do. Today, that's not good enough. You've got to add cybersecurity into the mix. So that left-hand side is showing that. So you've got the, the system, the avionic security architecture has to protect the processing, which is the OFP, the flight software, has to protect the data at rest, encrypt it, and in motion. So the, the data plan, excuse me, the data would be the mission plan. So risk five for this, for my ASA, why am I doing that? Uh, the obvious three reasons that we've been hearing for the last three days. It, but it allows me in my, to future-proof our vehicle management computers, our flight computers. So first reason is it's flexible. I can instantiate processing in hard, uh, you know, hard, uh, hard cores and metal or in soft cores and fabric. It's adaptable. I can drop in soft cores and tailor my security to each different program. And, and last, it's customizable. So I can extend the ISA so at some point in the future I can add in AI, ML, and neural net type algorithms. So in short, it really allows us to future-proof our, our VMCs, our vehicle management computers. So again, it's, it's assuming zero trust, which means everything has to authenticate each other before anything happens. So here I, I've, I've shown the air vehicle in a quad redundant configuration. So there's four VMCs in there. So in red there, you'll see the, the, that the VMC is the root of trust. So the, the trust is anchored in hardware, in the FPGA, in a puff. The puff, if you're not familiar, is the uh, physically unclonable function. It takes advantage of the entropy uh, when the masks are made for the chips. And basically, it's effectively a digital fingerprint for that chip. So it's unique to every chip. So each of those VMCs will have its own unique identity. So the first thing that happens when it's powered up is the VMCs, well, they run internal bit, they authenticate internal circuit cards, but then they reach out and authenticate the other vehicle management computers. And it's two-way. And if anything is wrong, somebody will flag a fault and send a, send a message out saying, hey, this guy's not checking out. Same thing with the ground computer. When the ground, the ground support computer is plugged in, the VMC will authenticate the ground support computer and vice versa. So the, uh, the ground station, the same thing. When we take off from a base, there'll be a ground station that does the launch and recovery is what we call it. And it'll fly out to an area of operations and there'll be a handover to another ground station, kind of like a cell phone handover. The air vehicle is not going to start talking or taking commands from that new ground station until it's been authenticated. So, once the trust is established in these flight computers, it's extended out with CIA and, and, and the cyber resiliency. I add cyber resiliency by adding monitoring and recovery functions. And I see I'm running out of time here. So this is a typical, typical overview of an air vehicle. All the input systems on the left, all the outputs on the right, the, the encrypted and signed OFP and mission plan have been securely loaded into the VMCs. Uh, the navigators provide uh, position in three space and angular rates. The air data provides static 
and dynamic pressures for altitude, barrel altitude, and airspeed. The radio altimeters bounce FMCW waves off the ground. They're the eyes of the airplane. So that's how the air vehicle, when it's coming in for landing, knows how to flare and decrab. Of course, the engine and the flight control service actu actuators, the ailerons, rotavators, and spoilers are to maneuver in three space. And then, of course, we need the landing gear. We need the brakes to safely stop. Uh, two more slides. So this is how I'm leveraging the mature ecosystem. My entire VMC can fit into a Polar Fire SOC. So that second core, that second 64-bit RISC-V core, I can run a redundant copy of my OFP, of my flight software. Down in the fabric, I'm going to drop two uh, soft core Sci-5s down there to implement my monitoring and recovery functions. And then the IO is handled by Rambus, and I'm using their uh, CMRT, their Crypto Manager Root of Trust, to perform hardware boot. Uh, the fabric, I lock down the fabric with Tortuga Logic, uh, Dover Microsystems is handling my, uh, the intent of my execution and my monitoring and recovery, and Hex5, Cesare was just speaking before. I'm using him to do my multi-zone security. And so when is it gonna be used? So my last slide, after the new year, just go outside at night and look up, there's an operational satellite flying RISC-V. And that's it, thank you very much.